Hello everybody, welcome to That's Cakeable, I'm Janine and this week I'm showing you how I made this gorgeous little puppy dog cake. It was funny, you know, I put a poll up on Facebook once it was only slightly made and asked people to guess what I was making this week. Well, I got responses from slugs, snails, squirrels, squirrels, uh, Jabba the Hutt, none of them were right. It was this gorgeous puppy dog. If you are just starting out with sculpting but you want something that's slightly more challenging than the norm, I recommend you give this one a go. It's really not that difficult. Time consuming, yes. Difficult, not so much. Anyway guys, let's get on with it and I hope you really enjoy this week's video. Okay, so obviously with 99.9% .9 of sculpted cakes, we need a good structure. So I've taken a thick MDF board that I've drilled a hole into and I'm hot gluing a thinner MDF board on the base of that. Flip it back over and fill that drilled hole with some hot glue. And then I take a dowel, which is the same size as the hole that I've drilled or thereabouts, and I pop that into the hole. I cover that with some aluminium foil tape to make sure that it's food safe and do the same for the board. Okay, now using my template, and I can't stress to you enough how important it is to use templates for your sculpted cakes, I check that everything is in the right position and I start building up my cake. So here I have a five inch round cake that is one inch thick and I filled that with some buttercream and then I stack another cake the same size on top fill it with buttercream, and then I move on to six inch cakes. Now using your template, that helps you estimate how much cake and what sizes the cakes need to be. I've taken my template again to check that I have the right structure size happening. Sometimes your eyes can play tricks on you and you think that it's not high enough, not wide enough, and then you put your template against it and you're spot on. So that's why it's great to have them. Another few of the six inch rounds. And then to top it off, one more five inch round. Once again, I can't stress enough how important it is to use a dense cake when you're sculpting cakes. If you use a soft cake, it does tend to crumble and it just makes your life a whole lot more difficult. Okay, so I'm taking my template and I'm scoring around the outside of the shape that I have to cut. Using that line as a guide, I then go ahead and start sculpting my cake with a small serrated knife. Just going little by little as it's easier to remove more cake than it is to put more cake back on. I ended up with sort of a light bulb shape for this puppy dog's body. Now to build up the body, I chose to use a cake pop mix or cake clay, which is cake mixed with buttercream, mushed together and it tastes delicious. I've used my template once again to make sure that I'm measuring it up and getting the right size and shape. Once that's done, I pop that aside to chill, which firms up that cake clay mixture. And then I bring it back and I give it a good coat of chocolate ganache, which I smooth out, ready for our final covering. Once again, taking my template and marking out where the puppy dog's legs are. And I'm using that cake clay once again to build up those legs. And now for the cute bum shot. Look at that cute little bottom. Once you've got the legs right, once again, pop that aside to chill, firm up that cake clay, bring it back and give that a good ganache coat also. Now if you don't get it perfectly smooth, don't worry too much because the way that we finish this cake is very, very forgiving. Now I wanted to give him a few little rolls in his legs and on his back, just to give him a bit more character. So I've taken some white modeling chocolate, rolled it into snakes and popped it where I want the little rolls on his body to be. This of course will end up underneath the fondant. I did that on both sides and then I took a giant piece of white fondant and covered his whole body. Lifting it up making sure that we get into all those cracks and crevices. This is where using your hands is the best way to get all the markings that you need. I did use tools also, but using your hands is great for getting into all those crevices and 
rolls and things that we put in earlier. And there he is, all covered. Okay, now let's make this little guy's head. So as you can see, I made sort of a long egg shape oval, firstly, and then I built up down the bottom with a sideways egg shape oval that was a lot more raised than the top of his head. It's an odd shape. Once that was chilled and set up, I used my handy dandy rasp, which I love. You can get this at you can get this tool at most hardware stores for just a few dollars. It helps grind down, sand down almost the Rice Krispie treats to make them smooth and helps perfect any edges or perfect the shape or it's it's just a great tool. I can't recommend it enough. Okay, so to make the features on his face, firstly I just popped those two little bits of modeling chocolate there as guides for where his eyes are. And I built up his little sad looking hooded eyes with some modeling chocolate. And then went in and did the bridge of the nose the same way, using my fingers and modeling tools to smooth that chocolate into the rice cereal treats. Now he's got some furrows on his brow. Some good rolls, actually. I think he's my brother. See? Who wins? I reckon I come pretty close. Okay, so to do that, I did the same thing and just used some snakes of fondant, uh, sorry, snakes of modeling chocolate. Smoothed that into his head with my hands and modeling tools. And then he had sort of another big roll right across the top of his snout. So I did the same thing with that. For any vacant real estate, meaning places where the Rice Krispies are exposed. I just covered that with some white chocolate ganache and smoothed that out. And there he is, ready for covering. I take a piece of white fondant and cover his face. Once again, mostly using my hands to get all around the edges and then to get into all those little folds and furrows and eyebrows and sockets and muzzles and all the bits and pieces. Your hands are great tools. I cut off the excess fondant with my X-Acto blade. And then I'm taking some fondant and using the fondant on the fondant to smooth out the fondant. It's a lot of fondant. I took my modeling tool and just poked in where his eye holes are. Okay, so this is a cushion, and the cushion is covered in plastic wrap, and the plastic wrap is covered in a tea towel. And now what I've done is I've taken the head that I've actually allowed to set for about three hours, put it face down onto that cushion so that I don't smush his little features any more than I have to, and I've built up the back of his head with a dark chocolate mud cake clay. Don't worry if you get the beautiful white clean fondant at the front of the face dirty here. Like I said, the way we finish this cake is very forgiving and you will not see it. To finish the back of the head, I just cover that in some chocolate ganache, smooth that out. And then as I did with the front of the face, I used a piece of white fondant and covered the back, cut off the excess on the sides and it was done. As you can see, messy, not going to matter, promise. To attach the head to the body, I've just used a couple of skewers, put some royal icing on the board and just leaned it against and pushed it into the body of the dog. And because of the shape of the head, it actually sits there very comfortably without smooshing all of your hard work. This is what I was talking about, the finish. So I've taken some chocolate royal icing, a brand new scourer that I've cut into small pieces and I dab that over the royal icing to make a stippled effect. I did this with my llama cake a few videos ago. If you wanna watch that video, you can watch it here. I did that all over his body and I had to go back in and do a couple of coats in some patchier places. It's time consuming, but so worth it. To make his ears, I take a large teardrop piece of white fondant and just smoosh it into shape, basically, testing it up against the side of his head if I'm happy with the size and the length and did that twice of course because he has two ears and pop those aside. To make his tail I take another piece of white fondant that I taper at one end, cut that to what I thought was the right size, test it against the size of the dog, wasn't happy, cut off the rest and I think I'm happy this time. 
I placed a skewer into that tail, right into the center, so that I can attach it to his body, or his booty, securely without it falling over. Here we go, attaching the tail. Just find the spot that you like, pop it on, and smush down the fondant onto his little bottom. The ears, well, they were a little bit of a challenge because they're so heavy, so I attached them with some royal icing. And like you'll see in just a minute, they insisted on sliding down his head. So what I did was took a little bit of fondant, put it underneath the base of his ear, which held it in place while it dried. And of course, you're going to have to go over the ears and the tail with the same stippling method that I used for the rest of the body. Now in for some dimension, my handy dandy airbrush. So I used a mixture of a dark brown and a black to give him some more dimension. Don't be scared of your airbrushes, people. Don't be scared of the airbrush. They are an invaluable tool. And then to give him some highlights, maybe he's a little bit of an older dog, you know, the gray spots that lots of older dogs tend to have. I've taken a dry brush just with some white gel color and brushed that into areas all over his body. Now I decided that I wanted his face to be a little whiter, so I actually went in with some white royal icing and stippled his little muzzle area and the bridge of his nose and the end of his tail with white royal icing also. To make his feet, I just took some fondant and rolled it into a ball, flattened it down a little bit and made a couple of little marks in there for his paws. And for the front paws, it was more of a teardrop shape because I needed to flatten one end, as you can see me doing here, so that it fits under his little muzzle area, which you can also now see is white. Here's his cute little front feet. Now to make his eyes, I simply took some black fondant, rolled it into teardrop shapes and popped them into the little eye sockets that we had made earlier. I popped a couple of little pieces of white fondant on there for some catch lights and then I used some decorating glaze later on to make them all shiny. Now for that huge nose, which I think just makes this little guy, I just rolled a large black piece of fondant into an oval attached it to his face with some royal icing, and then just using the inside part of your hand, you'll find that if you squash it against his face using that part of your hand, it will stay nice and rounded. Oh, he's so cute, so cute. Now to make his little whisker marks, I've used some edible art paint in black. I'm just dipping my sugar shaper into the paint and dotting it onto his face in three spots, which of course I go ahead and do that on the other side also. And then I wanted to give him some rosy cheeks. I feel like I'm talking so much. So I've taken some petal dust and just rubbed that onto his cheeks. And I also rubbed some onto his paws. Now to cover the board, I just decided to make a little rug for him, a little woolen rug, so it's all knitted. So I've taken a knitted texture mat and rolled that onto some marbleized purple fondant to get that nice knitted effect. Very easy, very, very effective. To attach it to the board, I just moistened the board and just popped it sporadically over the board, ruffling it and rolling it in places to make it look more like a blanket. Cut off the excess there. My studio light's shining in his nose and there he is, our gorgeous little puppy. Really, really quite simple. Ah, oh, I love him, I just love him. Well guys, that brings us to the end of this week's video. I hope you really enjoyed watching me put this little guy together. I know I absolutely loved making him. Now I'd have to say that this guy would be about an intermediate level. So if you've done a little bit of sculpting before, but you're ready for a bit more of a challenge, 
give this guy a go. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell in the bottom so that you are reminded every time I upload new content. Well, we have another cute, cuddly member to add to our ever-growing family of animal cakes. If you want to see the other animal cakes I've made, just click right here. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. I will see you next time. And until then, don't forget, go get your cake on. Bye.